Welcome everybody to this week's episode of the NFL Preview Show. Alongside Kevin Lakicki and Grace Ettinger, I'm Jack Taylor. And uh, to start it off this week, Martellus Bennett was cut from the Packers off of IR. He's been injured, I think, for, or not IR, excuse me, but he has been injured. And then immediately picked up by the his old team, or his former team as of last year, the New England Patriots. Kind of interesting storyline as uh, he later tweeted, uh, I think it was stated as saying, a lot of things have, going, have been going on right now, I'll talk, tell you all about that later. Um, so that's kind of interesting going off of. Another big storyline to talk about, uh, the NFL plans now to use the sky cam that they have, you know, going over the middle of the field. Next Thursday for the, uh, uh, for that Thursday night football game, they're going to use that as the main broadcast camera the entire game. Kind of looks like, you know, if you're playing Madden, I guess, they, I think they might have some younger viewers that would like that. What are y'all's opinions on that, if you like it or don't like it? Well, as, as a frequent uh, player of Madden, uh, and one who is not that great, I must, must admit, um, t to no surprise, uh, I think it definitely uh, will create um, a new experience for the viewer because uh, now you'll be able to see like you know the routes that the receivers are running and where the defense is set up because the, the way it's set up um, now with the broadcast view you can't always see like what the what's happening with the safeties and who's biting on like play action passes and stuff so I definitely think it'll give uh, the viewers a more you know uh, in-depth look as to what exactly is going on in the plays and how the quarterbacks view and everything. Um, I agree. I think it'll be very interesting, um, especially from a broadcasting point of view. Um, it's something brand new that we've never seen done before. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the audiences respond to it, just as far as um, TV viewership, how pe how people feel about that. Yeah, it might it might definitely help the uh, uh, Thursday night ratings because they haven't they haven't been the yeah. greatest, especially you know when you have guys like Richard Sherman going out. Mm -hmm. uh, that definitely, you know, hurts the case for Thursday night games. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. And they used it a couple weeks ago when the Patriots and Texans were playing. There was all that fog. So, and it looked, it was interesting there, yeah, but that was just one or two plays. But it'll be cool to see. Um, another reoccurring headline is that uh, Ezekiel Elliott is again now suspended. It seems as though this one will hold up, his six-game suspension. The, uh, the lawyers for the NFL and for Ezekiel Elliott seem to be in a kind of a stalemate, but... The main factor being is this is still a story. We're in week 10 of the NFL, and at the beginning, we were, at our first NFL show, this was one of the main topics uh, when we had our first show, and yeah. it's still a topic, and I think that that is just crazy to think about when, when, he is, when you have so much going on. And, I mean, do you think this is going to make or break the Cowboys' season? Can they be successful without him? They haven't, had to, had, haven't really had to have that test, but now it seems like they might, they might need to look into that. Um, I think definitely it'll have an impact, um, especially since really it's kind of been back and forth between whether or not he's gonna he he'll be there or not. Um, and now that he's definitely not, it's gonna depend on how well they've prepared to run routes without him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean they they still have you know Darren McFadden and uh, the, you know so they, they, they'll, they'll be a little bit okay with the running game, but. Um, you know, I, I mean, I still think that with, with Dak, you have Jason Witten and Des Bryant and stuff. I, I don't think it'll be, like, falling off, you know, the cliff, so to speak. But, I mean, I still think that they'll be, they'll be okay. But um, especially with the Eagles at 8-1 and one in their division, they're, they're flying high, uh, no pun intended. Um, and so I think that they'll be kind of uh, hard to keep up if they keep up with the pace. Their best shot, I think, would be at a wild card or something. But... Um, We'll definitely see. I mean, it definitely you know hurts them because I mean Ezekiel is electrifying, so they'll they'll definitely take a hit and take a step backward. All right, and then uh, real quick, these are just some sort of quick picks. Uh, one reason, the main reason as to why, uh, who do y'all think is going to be the MVP come the end of the year, and your main reason for it? I think it might be uh, Kareem Hunt. He already leads the league in rushing, uh, so I think that I mean. If he's able to keep that up, especially Ezekiel Elliott was second, so now that he, he's going to miss those six games, I think it definitely could uh, widen that gap. Um, and especially if, if the Chiefs are able to kind of get back to their old ways and kind of and you know make make the playoffs and you know uh, keep contending in that AFC, the, the you know Kareem Hunt definitely might be a name that, that you might be seeing more of. All right, um, I'm going to go with one of Kareem Hunt's um, fellow 
um, teammates. Yeah, I'm going to go with Alex Smith. Um, I love what he has done with the team, what he and Andy Reid. I think they are one of the best, if not the best, quarterback coach duo in the league. Um, and, yeah, so definitely Alex Smith. I'll say surprise not here. You know, some of the main candidates we hear about, like Carson Wentz or Drew Brees, those quarterbacks, you know, have, have seemed to ignited their offense. For me, it would be Drew Brees. I think that they're – their offense has had the probably the, the most lacking roster in a while, and now that their defense is fine, I think that he is kind of pulling that team forward. But that's a I, I think Drew Brees is the most underrated quarterback in the history of the NFL because he what he he has had like he had like maybe Marcus Colston, uh, and they they had like a few good years with Reggie Bush, but I mean he like consistently has like no one. I mean when they back when they had Jimmy Graham. You know, that was, like, I think one of the better, you know, uh, receivers that he had. But every year he has, like, nobody on there. And he has no defense. So he's, you know, they quickly give up a score and then he's back on the field. And he, he's throwing it to, like, you know, guys like, you know, us. And, and for some reason he still puts up, you know, you know 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 yards every year. So I definitely think that he, uh, you know, he's definitely going to be in the hunt as well because he always puts up a good year. All right, and so then we got a couple games slated off, and um, y'all can tell if you got some games that you think are for sure fire lock for one or two teams, or what games you think are going to be an upset. Uh, the games, some of our picks this week are our main games, the best games of the week. We have the Vikings taking on the Redskins. We have the Saints playing the Bills. The Patriots are playing the Broncos. That's always a good matchup. And then uh, last but not least, we have the Cowboys playing the Falcons. So let me know what y'all think about if they got any locks this week or any uh, upsets and from those games. I think if we were going to stay a lock, I'd probably say the Cowboys over the over the Falcons. I think that that's, I think there's, I mean, the Falcons have just been very lackluster off coming off their Super Bowl appearance. So I think that they'll uh, probably, you know, drop the ball at home. And I, th I think even without Ezekiel Elliott, I think that that's still a pretty winnable game for them. Um, I think the closest game to a lock for me is probably going to be Minnesota and Washington. Um, the Vikings have been hot this year. Um, they're on a roll, and Washington has just been so – they've had so many injuries just thing after thing. I think um, yeah. that, that one's probably a lock for me. Yeah, it's the same for me. I think the Vikings um, – I don't think it's going to be a super close game, but I do think that as a game they're going – I mean, I don't think that's going to be a um, – I, I think it's going to be a close game, excuse me, um, but I also think that that's a game that the Vikings are going to win. Um, another lock for me in my mind. I think the Falcons are gonna. I think they're gonna come. They, 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 they're pretty pissed right now. I mean, they've been <laughs> playing some bad games, and without Zeke, I just don't trust the Cowboys really. I know they have Dez still, and I know they got you know always. The, um, they have um, Jason Witten and Dak, but I think that that the glue of that team is Zeke. Yeah. And then um, just some quick upsets. I think the Bills are not a bad team at all. That nope. Sean McDermott has revitalized that defense in Buffalo, and I think that. The Saints are looking for an ego checker, and I think this is that game. And then um, another upset in my mind, I think that uh, the Broncos, they, the Patriots, no matter how good they are, no matter how good the Broncos are, that's always a game that they get in their heads. And yeah. I think, again, the Broncos are going to somehow find a way to come out, come out on top. Um, so now we transition over to some, some more discussion about players. Um, midway through the season, we can see the impact that rookies are having on their teams. Yeah. Kareem Hunt, Juju Smith-Schuster, Alvin Kamara, even Chris McCaffrey has had, a, even though he's had a bit of a more toned down influence on his team. What, who do y'all think is slated right now with, with Deshaun Watson being out for the year? Who do you think kind of fills that role of rookie of the year? I, I think it's, I mean, I, I said that Kareem Hunt would gonna win the MVP, so. Uh, you don't win the you don't win the MVP if you don't win the Rookie of the Year, um, so I think that he's he's probably got that locked down, especially with Zeke being out for those six games, and especially now that's late in the season. Um, so I think that I, I I would probably put my uh, my best bets on Kareem Hunt being the Rookie of the Year. Um, I'm gonna go with Kareem Hunt also, just because he's got such a foundation. The Chiefs Andy Reid seems like a great guy to play for. Um, I feel like that kind of gives him a boost over maybe some of the other um, rookies that are on teams that are not doing as well as the Chiefs. Um, if Deshaun Watson was still with, had not had that injury, I would have definitely picked him. Um, I think Bill O'Brien would, and he would have worked great together. Um, he, Bill O'Brien's a very offensive-minded guy. He was a, was the offensive corner coordinator for the Patriots, um, and I would have definitely picked him, but he's not an option anymore, so definitely Kareem Hunt. Yeah, yeah. I feel bad for the, this rookie class because uh, aside from Kareem Hunt and Sean Watson, who kind of stood above the pack, 
all these other rookies are very athletic and very mm -hmm. big playmakers. You have Juju Smith, uh, Schuster, Cooper Cup, Chris McCaffrey. You have Alvin Kamara. Uh, you and on the defensive side too, you have Marshawn Lattimore. You have um, um, you have Jamal T Adams. T from the Jets. T yeah, T.J. Watt. I mean, a lot of players that really seem like a really good rookie class. But mm -hmm. there's just those two players that step yeah. out above the rest of the rookie class. And so I think. For argument's sake, I think that uh, it seems like it's going to be Kareem Hunt. But um, other than that, I don't really think anyone else can kind of top him. Yeah. And that's yeah, hard, to, hard to argue about for. And along with the great rookie class and talking about the impact of players, there has been a huge amount of injuries this year. And not only injuries, but season-ending injuries to very big players. We've seen the likes of Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson. We've seen um, David Johnson. And just last night, or the other night, Richard Sherman yep. going yeah. out. So I think that these are some really big implications on, on how these teams will end later in the year. So who do y'all think, <clears throat> which player that's out for the year is, ha is going to make is going to be the biggest loss for their team and be the reason they don't make it to the postseason or is successful after they're on? Um, I'm going to say out of that group, probably probably Aaron Rodgers, just because um, he kind of is the back. He's definitely one of the most prominent leaders of that team. Um, and the Packers are always, the past couple years, they've been very consistent um, as far as playoffs um, but I just think this year without him and with some of the other injuries they've had it's not looking promising for them yeah I mean I, I would probably also say Aaron Rodgers but just to like keep it a little bit different um, I definitely think that uh, you know David Johnson is really a huge loss for the uh, Arizona Cardinals he's you know a dual threat guy he can you know catch out of the backfield also run you know you know hand it off to him uh, and I think that, you know, th they, they've had some injuries, um, but I mean, I, I like their team. They have a lot of great, you know, uh, you know weapons on offense. You, you have uh, Larry Fitzgerald, John Brown, guys like that. Um, but I think that, you know, if you're able to, it, you know, having David Johnson allows you to also like have a running game. So, you know, you can't just have, you know, you kind of have to have the guys at the you know in, in the front seven in the box. You can't just you know uh, just you know play back and assume the pass. So I, I think it definitely is a is a great way of keeping teams honest. And now that he's not there, I think that it's definitely definitely hurting them. I think it kind of combines with um, a couple players because I think that the Texans could have been a very far yeah. team in the postseason with, but then losing the the likes of Deshaun Watson, yeah. JJ Watt, yeah. Whitney Merciless. I think that, that completely decimated that team. And it in a in a division that looked pretty wide open in the beginning of the year now it's kind of it's kind of uh, questionable I mean obviously there's players like Odell Beckham and David Johnson that are huge yeah. losses but I don't think their teams no. would be anywhere near good enough to make it that far in the playoffs <laughs> even if they were on the team yeah I mean just imagine like how much better the Texans would be if they had JJ Watt because they didn't have him last year either so I mean and they still made the playoffs so I think that like the a AFC South is a very up in the air, uh, yeah. up you know, up for grabs division. You know the Jaguars. They seem to be you know making moves. They might be able to. Uh, you know they're currently in the wild card. They might be able to win the division. There's still the Titans. You know they're they're an upcoming team. Uh, so I think that it was really anyone's you know division. I think that if Deshaun Watson and J.J. Watt were both there, they would pro. And with the defense that they have, they would run away with that division. But um, I do think that Deshaun Watson and J.J. Watt definitely hurt them. But I am impressed at how well they've been able to play without J.J. Uh, Watt still being able to keep in there. You know, our, our guy Mario Williams, former Gamecock, he, he's, he's been stepping up. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's pretty good. All right, so we will be right back. We're going to send it to Matt Mumbaka and Ben Parsons, and they've got the fantasy lineup for y'all for this week. And uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking about the playoffs and standings outlook of the AFC. Welcome back, guys, to week 10 of the NFL season. I'm Matt Mumbaka alongside Ben Parsons, and we are here to give you guys the best fantasy football advice. And we're going to start off with a great game. The New Orleans Saints travel to Buffalo to face the Bills. Bills is solid defense, and the Saints offense on the road. I'm not sure what to expect there, but Ben, give us a little insight for that matchup. Fantasy-wise, I mean, you definitely got to start Drew Brees anytime. You definitely got to start Drew Brees. He's a fantasy monster. He's good for 300 yards, three touchdowns almost any day of the week. Um, also, I would look on the other side of the ball, look at uh, LaShawn McCoy and look at Tyrod Taylor to have a pretty good game against that uh, defense, uh, Saints defense that's not as strong. Yeah, that Saints defense has been a little bit better this season than in recent years. 
But I got to say, a name that you should look out for in that game is Charles Clay. The tight end for the Buffalo Bills is coming back this week, and he has been great fantasy fantasy wise this entire year when he is on the field and he's going to be playing this week so I expect him to have a good game and on the other side of the ball for the Saints we talk about these two running backs that they have now since trading away Adrian Peterson they have Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram and I think both of those guys are going to have big weeks against the Bills and I see both of them putting up solid fantasy points for you guys in your fantasy lineups this I'm going to disagree with that, though, because I think uh, their, the defense of the Bills, the running defense, has been very good so far this year, and I think they're not going to have as good as a game, but I really think that what's going to carry them this in this game is passing the ball, so I really think you should start those wide receivers that they have. They have a lot of talented wide receivers. Michael outs. Thomas, their number one, uh, he will be playing. He was questionable earlier this week, but I expect big production from him as well. Mm -hmm. And moving on, we're going to go to the Packers and Bears. And I know that's Brett Huntley against Mitch Trubisky, but there is some fantasy implication there. I, I expect Jordan Howard, who is a top 10 running back, uh, fantasy running back, and I think he's a top 10 running back in the mm -hmm. league. I think he's going to have a big game. And um, I expect that Bears offense to just have John, uh, Jordan Howard carry the load. Yeah, uh, I agree with you about Jordan Howard. He's definitely going to have to carry the load for that offense. Their offense has been struggling a little bit, but they're starting to find their way, and that's been fun to watch. Uh, I would also think about maybe starting their defense. Their defense has been pretty solid over the past couple weeks. They had two uh, defensive touchdowns against, uh, it was um, uh, the Panthers the other week. Yes. And, and um, I really think they're coming off a bye. They're coming off a bye. And Brett Huntley at quarterback for the Packers, not so great. So I do expect some solid fantasy production from that Bears defense. Mm -hmm. Moving on, we're going to the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Indianapolis Colts. This is a matchup that I actually think has a lot of fantasy implication because of the great fantasy players that are on the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, <laughs> and that is Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. Yeah. Those two guys are arguably. Running back one and wide receiver one. And they're both amazing. I expect them to put up numbers like that this week. Yeah. Uh, this, this is a, fan, a good fantasy matchup game if, if you're a Steelers fan or if you have Steelers on your team because yep. the Colts defense has been awful this year. They've been abysmal. And I really think the fact that uh, ben, Lo ben Roethlisberger has struggled at the beginning of the year, but I do think that he's started to find his way the last couple weeks. And I think he's going to have a monster game. So I would definitely start Ben Roethlisberger if you have him this week. And like you said, start those wide receivers and even their tight ends. Their tight ends are good as well. And another wide receiver on that Steelers offense, Juju Smith-Schuster, the rookie from USC, has made some big plays so far this season, and he might have a big play coming up this week and a possible flex option for you in mm -hmm. your fantasy lineups. Also, the Colts cut their cornerback, Vontae Davis, two-time Pro Bowler yep. this week, so that defense is definitely depleted, and I expect big numbers from that entire Pittsburgh Steelers offense. Moving on, we got the Houston Texans hosting the LA Rams, and the LA Rams last week with Jared Goff at the helm, crazy to say this, he threw four touchdowns last week. He did. And that offense put up a ton of fantasy production. Sammy Watkins, even had, with one catch, had 18 <laughs> fantasy points. With yep. one catch, folks. Um, so I expect solid fantasy production from that entire Rams offense, even though that Texans defense is a good one. They, with Deshaun Watson's injury, that doesn't just affect their offense. That affects, affects both that sides of the ball. And that team has actually been shaky uh, without him. And I expect that Rams offense to put up points like they did against the Giants last week. Yeah, the, the Rams offense dismantled the Giants last week. They scored 51 actual points, and they scored a ton of fantasy points. It was fun to watch them really figure things out and prove that they're a force to be reckoned with this season. But uh, on the other side of the ball, if you have DeAndre Hopkins, I still wouldn't start him because he did not look like he was being used properly last week with Tom Savage. Yeah. Uh, the chemistry just isn't there, even though they have played together. And so I really think the one person you might want to start is definitely a Lamar Miller because they're going to have to run the ball if they're going to want a chance to win this game. Very true, very true. And for the LA Rams, I think a solid flex option for you is Cooper Cup, mm -hmm. the rookie. Uh, he can, you know, provide uh, some solid fantasy production for you this week, and he's a solid flex play, especially if you need to pick up somebody with all of these buys going on. Now we got the Dallas Cowboys against the Atlanta Falcons, and I believe, as of right now, <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott is suspended this week. We'll find out later, maybe not, but right <laughs> now he is. As of right now, he is suspended, and that means I, you should be picking up Alfred Morris as, a, as your replacement running back. And um, I actually think that he will do just fine against that Atlanta Falcons defense. And um, I expect, I think Dez is also going to be playing. 
Dak has been playing really well. He's been the top five fantasy quarterback uh, in the past recent weeks. So I expect a high scoring high scoring game, but Dak Prescott and uh, and those Cowboys wide receivers to give you solid fantasy production. Yeah, definitely look at maybe Cole Beasley as your flex position, but also like you said, Alfred Morris start him. He's a he's a beast, and I would definitely start him this week. Anybody can run behind that offensive line that the Cowboys have, and he's really he really loves that stretch run that they run so often, and I really think he's going to be able to run the ball all over Atlanta this week. And uh, on the other side of the ball, look at Julio Jones. He had an off week last week. He dropped an easy touchdown, and the whole world was was on him for that. <laughs> but um, I would still, you still got to start him. Matt Ryan, I think, is going to have another bounce back game because they started to figure things out on the offensive offensive side of the ball in that game. It's just they had a couple things not go their way, and then they lost their composure. So this is a game of two teams that can really play really well, and it'll be fun to watch. Yeah. Now I want to talk about a big streaming defense for you. I know at the beginning of the season we, we said that they were horrible. <laughs> the New England Patriots. I'm telling you, this week they go up against the Broncos in mile high. I believe Brock Eiswaller will be playing quarterback for the Broncos. And he, guys, let's face it, he's not a very good quarterback. <laughs> uh, and that Patriots defense, coming off of a bye week, having a full week to prepare for him, I think they're going to be ready. Bill Belichick is going to get those guys prepared. Mm -hmm. And that is a great streaming defense for you this week if you need to pick up a defense and uh, I expect a lot of points for them uh, coming against the Broncos this week. Yeah I mean it's definitely a matchup where the Patriots are favored but that being said the Patriots don't always play well in mile high so you might want to be a little hesitant on that and Brock Osweiler yes he hasn't played well but he has beaten the Patriots before so it's a little interesting. To see he can do happen. it again! Maybe he can <laughs> you never know but uh, pretty much for the Patriots let's start Tom Brady duh uh, start Robin Kowski duh just Pretty much start the whole Patriots team because the Broncos got torched last week too. Yeah, a possible flex option or uh, especially even in deeper leagues, I, I have to play him in, as a wide receiver too, is Danny Amendola. Yep. With Chris Hogan being out, uh, he's going to fill in a nice role there and be the wide receiver too in New England. And when you're the number two wide receiver in New England, you, you, you put up some fo solid fantasy production. And also, a sleeper is Martellus Bennett, mm -hmm. the new aqu newly acquired tight end for that um, Patriots offense. So just... More weapons for the great Tom Brady, and uh, I expect a solid fantasy production, even though that Broncos defense is amazing. Yes. Um, Patriots, I think, are going to put up some points this week. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Uh, the addition of Bennett is definitely going to help that offense, and not that they needed any more help, but they definitely got it. Guys, that's all we have for you. That's the fantasy football update. We're sending it back to you. All right, thanks guys. So uh, now we're talking about the AFC. The current standings right now for, you know, if the, play, if the season were to end today and the playoffs were to start, it would be the Pittsburgh Steelers at number one, Patriots at number two, Kansas City at number three, and Tennessee at number four. Those are your division leaders. And on the wild card, you have the Jaguars and the Bills. Now, I mean, there's a lot of surprising names in that. I mean, to see oh, yeah. Tennessee, Jacksonville, and Buffalo, teams that haven't made the playoffs collectively in a solid 15, 20 years. It's been a while since those teams have been in the playoffs, mm -hmm. um, especially at the same time. For, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen Tennessee and Jacksonville in the playoffs at the same time. But I know it's. Still I didn't even know that was allowed. <laughs> I think they just just made it a exactly. rule. Exactly. Um, so I don't think that. Uh, I don't think that this is. There's going to be a whole lot of change up just because of the way the AFC is looking right now with injuries, teams that you know didn't live up to the hype. But um, who do y'all think? How do you think the, these standings are going to change? Are they going to stay the same? Or what teams could maybe take the, some of the teams in the, in the standings right now to take their place? Because we still got a lot of time. Um, I'm going to say it's not going to move around too much, really. Um, I think New England and um, Kansas City, they're usually solid teams. The Steelers are usually pretty consistent. Um, unless there's major injuries or anything happens, I definitely think those three will probably be in there. Um, to me, the AFC South was probably the most surprising. I thought with Deshaun Watson, I didn't was not expecting him to have the injury that he did. Um, yeah. I thought ja um, Houston would definitely be up there, but um, Tennessee and Jacksonville definitely, I think, caught everyone completely off guard. Mm -hmm. Nobody was really expecting either of those. And Buffalo, nobody was either expecting any of those teams to really be in the hunt like mm -hmm. they are now. Yeah, I mean, I think that if anything's going to change, it might be uh, Jacksonville, Tennessee flip-flopping. You know, yeah. uh, maybe, maybe the Jaguars end up taking the division, but <clears throat> um, I don't think the Steelers are going to really, barring a major injury, I don't think that they'll um, get you know de seated. Although I am kind of uh, you know shocked that they are the number one seed. I thought that that might maybe uh, go to the Patriots or 
you know, what happened on the, the opening kickoff game, you know, everyone said that the, the you know, the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. Um, but, I mean, I think that everything will stay pat. But you know what? We knew that uh, our, you know, anticipation for what would happen in the season has kind of just all gone out the window. You thought the, you know, Packers were going to be fine. They lose Aaron Rodgers. You thought the Giants would be okay. They, you know, they lose mm -hmm. Odell. The Jets are somehow decent. <laughs> They're trying, which is always good to see. Um, Oakland. So yeah, o in yeah. Oakland with David Carr going, uh, Derek Carr going down. Um, so you, you, you know, we we think that it's gonna stay like this, but uh, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. And then you're gonna start, you know, having those, you know, uh, the weather, you yeah. know, have you know take place, you know, where you have snow and everything. So it's just gonna be it's gonna be a mess. It's gonna be a lot of fun to watch. Mm, I think um, if anything, you know, that the top three might change, even that top four switching around with the teams that are on top. A lot, I mean, as of right now, it's all pretty close. The the top three team, the top two teams are all six and two. Top, uh, the others are six and three, five and three, five and three, five and three. I mean, even the ones in the hunt are four and four, four. I mean, so it's all yeah. still pretty close record wise. I can see the Titans kind of falling out. They're only a half a game above the Jacks because they have a one game. They beat them a couple weeks ago, and um, I can see that the, the the Titans have a history of you know not being able to to, to hold out the yeah. entire season. Um, and I think the Jags are, with that defense, have the ability to move up in the standings, as well as I think Kansas City, kind of like Oakland, I think they are all just kind of hype, and I don't know how legitimate they can be. They definitely have to do a lot to kind of get their season back to the way they were. I mean, they're still only 6-3, and three, but it's a, a fairly disappointing 6-3, and three, I think, to at least their fans or the people that thought, like we said, could win the Super Bowl. Yeah. And um, especially the Patriots, I mean, as bad as people say their defense can play or as bad as they say you know they're not as good as last year they still have a pretty good record but I don't think that's gonna change too much so who do y'all think I mean is gonna be in the AFC championship who well I think see? whether it be like you know uh, ethically or unethically I think the Patriots will find their way in there they might you know you know slide, slide a little deal with Roger Goodell might might give him a break or two um, but somehow the Patriots always find their way in there somehow, and I think their their opponent it could be a, a number of teams. I think that the Chiefs have definitely shown that they can go into New England and beat them, a la Week One. Um, but I think that I think it could be either them or the Steelers. I, I would I trust the uh, uh, Chiefs defense more, um, but also like we were saying about those. Huge losses, you know. They don't have Eric Berry, so that that definitely hurts their chances. But, um, and I mean, who knows? I mean, maybe the Bills might even, you know, make a run through the wild card and do that. But I mean, it's. I think it's too early to say who their uh, opponent will be. But I think it it's pretty much a lock that will be the Patriots, and that really hate. It pains me to say that. It really does. Um, I think it'll be one of the top three to either Pittsburgh, New England, or Kansas City. It'll it'll be one of those three, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as who I'm, I would say just based off of history, it'll be the Patriots. But obviously, the Steelers have have a very good percentage of winning Super Bowls, and the Chiefs. People have been saying for you know the past two or three years, Alex Smith and Andy Reid, they're gonna get a Super Bowl. So at the same time, um, I definitely feel like the Chiefs want it. Or may maybe what we could do is, you know, I don't think the Ravens are going to make the playoffs, but if we could just automatically put them in the AFC Championship game, they might beat the Patriots because they, they've always given them a hard time. So, I mean, who knows? It's, it's up. Um, yeah, I, in my mind, I think that I don't think, I don't think the Patriots have the fortitude to, to, to get back in this year. I think they're on the downswing, and I think that that allows teams like Pittsburgh and Kansas City and, heck, even some of these wildcard teams like the Jags to make the championship. Um, so in my mind, I think it's going to be Pittsburgh and Kansas City. I think that's the matchup that I, I so at least what I would like to see, but I, that's in my mind, I think that's what's going to happen. Um, I just don't see the, the Patriots making it that far this year, especially depending on who they play in the playoffs. All right, well, now we're going to go to Devin Gobeal. He's got the injury report for you all this week. Thanks, guys, and I'm Devin Gobeal here with this week's injury report. We're going to start with what's been a wild story this week with tight end Martellus Bennett. Now, Bennett was cut by the Packers this week for, and this is how they listed it, a failure to disclose medical condition designation. There's a lot of questions about what's happening, and reports have slowly come out through the week. Right now, this is what it seems to have happened. Now, Bennett this year has been playing through a rotator cuff injury. He played through it all year, but then after Aaron Rodgers went down, he missed 
practice and games for two weeks straight. Apparently, he then asked the Packers for season-ending shoulder injury. And then this is what caused Green Bay to cut him, because he has already said that he plans to retire after this season. And the Packers felt like him asking for shoulder injury was his way of just cashing out, sitting out the rest of the year, and just taking money from them without really trying. They've, there have been reports that players felt like Bennett had quit on the team. So the Packers cut him. A couple days later, the Patriots, who he was a big part of their Super Bowl championship team last year, picked him up off the waiver wire. Now, Bennett has passed the Patriots physical, and he has practiced this week as soon as he got to New England. There's actually a good chance that he even plays this Sunday. So obviously there are a lot of questions around this whole story and what's really going on. Bennett himself even tweeted last night that all this is crazy, and he'll tell all of us the real story soon. So I expect there to be a lot more reports and a lot more sides to this story to come out in the coming weeks. Now let's go from this wild story to a story we have heard way too much this year. Another big time player has suffered a season ending injury. This time, Seahawks cornerback Richard Sherman has burst his Achilles during Thursday night's game. Sherman knew immediately and you could see him walking around the sideline telling his teammates that it was his Achilles and that he was out for the year. This was later confirmed by Seattle after the game ended. Bengals running back Jeremy Hill suffered an ankle injury during pregame warmups before last week's game. He did not practice this week and will once again miss this week's game. This is going to give rookie running back Joe Mixon the opportunity to take over the starting role for this week. Browns defensive end Miles Garrett will return this week after missing the Browns last game with a concussion. He hopes to keep playing this season. He's missed a lot of time in his rookie campaign, which is not good for a young player. Cowboys wide receiver Des Bryant injured his knee during the Cowboys game against the Chiefs. And even though he hasn't practiced at all this week, Des has said that he completely expects to play this week. And of course, the players are usually going to be more optimistic about what's going on than the team is, but the Cowboys themselves have also said they expect him to be out there this Sunday. Vikings quarterback Sam Bradford has been placed on season-ending IR. Now, he hasn't played for a while, and a lot of people expected him to be out for the rest of the season, but this officially ends his season. And a big reason for doing this is it opened up a roster spot that the Vikings were able to fill by activating quarterback Teddy Bridgewater. Now, Bridgewater is expected to be on the bench this week while Case Keenum starts again, but Bridgewater being back after suffering such a gruesome injury last preseason is a good thing to see. The Vikings are going to ease him back into things, and hopefully we can actually see him playing again this year. Redskins tight end Jordan Reed is a game-time decision for this Sunday's game. Reed missed last week with a hamstring injury and was a limited participant in practice this week. Hopefully he can be out there and come back. Buccaneers quarterback Jameis Winston has been playing through a shoulder injury for the past couple of weeks, and it's really hindered his play and, in fact, forced him to miss the entire second half of last week's game. After an MRI revealed that the injury was worse than the Buccaneers originally thought, they decided to shut him down for at least two weeks. The team is, of course, 2-6 and six and at the bottom of the division, so there really is no need to force him to play when they could just make the injury more serious and something that they do have to worry about. So they're shutting him down, hoping he can come back 100% and be ready for probably next year. Thanks. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Devin. Yeah, there's been a lot of injuries this year, and uh, it's kind of made an impact on the teams that we're seeing in the playoffs right now, especially for teams in the NFC. So as it stands right now, you know, if the playoffs were to start today, um, Philadelphia would be number one, New Orleans number two, the Vikings number three, the Rams number four, those would be your division leaders, and then a wild card, you'd have Seattle and then Carolina. So um, it, it's not that surprising, the teams that I think you're in there, the teams that we are seeing are have kind of been in the playoffs a pretty good amount. I mean, the the a, the NFC East is always you know up for grabs. When it, I mean, that's one of the most competitive divisions in the NFL. Um, I think it is surprising to see the 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 um, the Saints in because everyone, especially because of the hype that was building up from the Falcons after last year, and um, everyone thought the Bucks were gonna you know kind of starting to be on the upturn. Um, but I think that the Saints have proven that they're, you know, they're a legitimate team, and it's back for them to be time. It's time for them to be in the spotlight once again. Um, I think, yeah, definitely the Rams are a huge surprise. I, Sean McVay has done wonders for that team. They've already outscored the team, the same team last year, and I think that that's crazy. And I think they're going to stay in that spot. Um, and then Seattle and Carolina are, are kind of they've. they've it's hard to envision an NFC, NFC playoffs without them. Last year was the first time that you know the Panthers hadn't been in the playoffs in the past five or six years in Seattle. 
ever since they've gotten Russell Wilson, has seemed to be in the playoffs. Yeah. So I think that that's not very surprising. What about y'all? Does anything here surprise you or anything you think is going to change within this these standings? I think the Rams are the biggest surprise. And, I mean, I knew that they were – I thought they were pretty good. But, I mean, I, I, I kind of underestimated Jared Goff. I didn't think he would be this, this good. And, um, I mean, the, they, the way that they just, you know, destroyed the Giants. I mean, I know it's not saying much. The Giants only won one game this year. But, you know, it's still – I think that that it's there are some surprises in there. Um, I mean, I gotta th- I gotta believe that you know the uh, the Seahawks will at least probably get that wild card. Um, but I mean, I just I, I I don't know about the Saints. I don't I don't trust that defense. I think we might be able to get the Panthers slide in there. They might overtake them. Well, I mean that Saints defense has looked the best it has in years. I think that was the piece they're missing, and now they have it. So I think that that's. With Drew Brees firing all cylinders for the team he's got, I don't. As much as I hate to say it, I don't think they that that moves that much, unless they're barring some some sort of mishap from them. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that. Um, I, I mean, you know, Drew Brees is always automatic, but I still I think that. Um, the, I mean, they did lose Kelvin Benjamin. They traded him away. The Panthers did, but I, I still have confidence that that Cam can can bring his team back back from the dead and. And make a make a run in the last last couple months of the season. I believe in him. You can do it, Cam. Um, I think the top four teams right now are all very interesting to me. Um, Philadelphia, obviously, they're usually wild wild cards somewhere in there. But for them to be the number one seed right now, I think that's like crazy. We could have a Pittsburgh Philadelphia Super Bowl. Mm. That would be awesome. Yeah. Um, the Saints, I think, kind of what you guys have said, they kind of surprised everybody. They count on nowhere. Um, obviously, people were saying, you know, Drew Brees is getting old. He's going to retire, and um, maybe that gave kind of gave him the feel that he needed. To to get this team back together. Um, and then the Vikings, they're another one. They're usually somewhere in the wild card position, but right now they're number three, which I think is great. Um, and then the Rams obviously was another kind of complete surprise. Um, when they were in St. Louis, you know, it was kind of not, they were not consistent at all. Um, maybe now that they've moved, it's they have a new fan base. Maybe it's inspired them a little bit, yeah. but I did think that was very surprising. Um, and then <clears throat> Seattle and Carolina both, I think they'll at least stay in the wild cards, definitely. The, um, someone that's not uh, in the rankings right now, Dallas, I definitely thought after last year's performance, they would kind of be desperate, you know. They got so close to that to the Super Bowl, and then it it didn't work out for them. Um, and so I definitely think it's interesting that they weren't they're not in the running right now. Yeah, I th- I, th- I think that um, <clears throat> you know Zeke being suspended for six games definitely hurts <clears throat> them. But I still think that the Cowboys might be able to, to sneak in the playoffs too, because I I mean I just I I think that I mean with Dak Prescott and. Uh, and Jason Witten and you know uh, Des Bryant and Cole Beasley, he's also you know great in this slot. I think that their offense is just—it's one of the the better ones. I mean, obviously without Zeke, definitely drops them down a couple bit. But I think that they'll they'll uh, at least make the wild card. But I mean, I can't believe the Eagles. The Eagles are yeah. also a surprise team to me. I mean, I didn't see them starting off eight and one. I mean, they've just been on fire. And I think with Jay Ajayi. I don't think they're slowing down anytime mm. soon. But I got I got to disagree disagree with you on the Cowboys. Can this is gonna transfer over to our next session about these in the hunt teams? You've got Dallas, you've got Atlanta, <laughs> Detroit, Washington, and Green Bay um, teams that may, might be able to. I think that I think that without Zeke, I don't I don't see Dallas, be, especially with the way that these other teams are playing that are already in the wild card and the rest of their in the hunt. I don't think they have the ability to keep up with those teams, and they're certainly not gonna grab the divisional spot. So. <laughs> I just think that that's, that's kind of it for the Cowboys. Um, not necessarily a sophomore slump, but I mean, it's week 10, they got a six, he's got a six game suspension. If it holds through, because Lord knows if it will or not, that's, I mean, basically it, it, up until week 17. And I don't know that they'll be in the spot at that point where the one win will n- get them in the playoffs. Um, teams on that, I think Atlanta's, <coughs> not necessarily on the downturn, but I think that, you know, like their teams and their division, they're not gonna grab that divisional spot. Um, I think the wild card's their only hope. I think, for me, the Detroit has the best chance of grabbing either a wild card spot or the division spot. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater is coming back this week, but um, who knows how, how good he'll be. If he comes back and, and is the level that he used to be, then the Vikings have that division on lock. The Packers without Rodgers aren't really a team. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so I think that Detroit has faltered in these past couple weeks 
by not taking advantage. I mean, they've had the most healthy team, and they were looking pretty good in the beginning. And for them to not jump ahead, I think, is a bit is is a disappointment. But I think they still have time. And then um, Washington, out of that NFC East, might have the best chance of grabbing a spot. Um, I just don't know if it it'll, it'll be enough. So who do y'all think out of these teams will be able to get out of the hunt and into the playoffs? Um, I'm going to agree with you on Detroit. Um, they've been so close for so long. Um, I think they definitely deserve to be in. They've got Matthew Stafford, who um, honestly, knock on wood, he's been one of the healthiest quarterbacks. He hasn't had too many issues. Um, so definitely, yeah, Detroit would be mine. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I've, I've already plugged the Cowboys. So I think that they, I mean, I just, uh, I mean, I, I think that, I mean, Dak Prescott, he he's definitely he hasn't shown any signs of slowing down and uh, you know they, they have that three-headed monster on their offense uh, so I definitely think that the Cowboys will do it um, but I mean I wouldn't be surprised if maybe you know Detroit slips in there now that Green Bay is is kind of on the on the downswing um, although I mean if if Teddy Bridgewater you know comes back and he, he is the quarterback that you know he was anticipated to come to, to be coming out of Louisville I think that they definitely uh, will keep you know that NFC North uh, locked up. All right, and then real quick, last thing, no, uh, just a yes, no. If you think uh, that the Eagles will be the NFC championships or champions, yes or no? I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, it's been a while. Um, you know, they're they're you know flying high right now, but I think that you know there are other teams in the hunt that definitely you know are, are going to be aggressive and stuff and. Uh, you know, you know their play calling isn't always the best, but uh, I think definitely with Alshon Jeffrey, Jay Ajayi, Carson Wentz, you know they're definitely primed on offense. I just, it just feels weird to see to see the Eagles do so well. It's just, it's just not something we're used to seeing. I'm just gonna go with flat out yes. I think um, just they're hot right now, and I think they if they want it bad enough, they'll get it. <laughs> I'm, I'm real quick. I'm just gonna say no. Uh, I think there's a lot of competition, and um, the playoffs are always just kind of such an up in the air time. And I think that there's a team that it only takes one game, and I think one. I think a team can knock them out. Yeah, I mean, like you, you never know what's gonna happen with injuries. So you know, by the time like th we finish this show, uh, and like if we look back on it in a few weeks, it'll probably will be like, what were they thinking? Like everything they said was wrong. So, you know, in the world, you got to expect the unexpected, so, and the NFL is the same way. You, you never know what's going to happen. You could just have a freak injury and, you know, completely ruin your chances of, you know, of making the playoffs or the Super Bowl or whatnot. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. That's all for us here in the studio today. Alongside Kevin McClicky and Grace Ettinger, I'm Jack Taylor. Thanks, guys.